Hi guys, Steady Eddie here on another lovely sunny day in England. It's the middle of October and the sun is shining and there's a nice blue sky out there. You know, you've got to make the most of it while it still lasts. Okay, so as I've mentioned on another video, I have booked my flight to Thailand, London to Bangkok. It's coming up in the new year, which is just about two and a half months away. And I thought I'd do a few little videos on my thoughts uh, running up to the big move. So that's coming up uh, in the new year. I, I will be living in Southeast Asia indefinitely. There's a good word, indefinitely. So a few thoughts on uh, what the plans are. Well, let me just say, first of all, that I have actually booked my first couple of weeks accommodation in Southeast Asia in the delightful uh, resort known as Pattaya, yeah. Good old, you know, you know, bit, bit of fun. Couple of weeks of fun uh, to start proceedings. And that uh, couple of weeks will also give me time, you know, to sort out a few other things. I'd like to be staying in condos long term, but, you know, I'll, I'll sort all that out when I get there. The fact is that when I step off the plane uh, in, in Bangkok in the new year, I'll be going straight to Pattaya. I'll spend a couple of weeks having, having a bit, bit of fun and also deciding uh, what, whatever comes af after that. I'll sort that out when the time comes anyway. And uh, you know, just to say that the hotel that I booked is, you know, it's a very, very reasonable price. Get quite pleased with it. So anyway, about living in Thailand and Cambodia and Southeast Asia in general, uh, I, I, um, I've seen a lot of videos posted by people over the years uh, about how much it costs overall to live in one of these countries or to live in a couple of these countries or basically to retire abroad, the overall cost of living. And often the, the vlogger puts a figure on it and quite often the figure that they put on uh, this of how much it costs to li live in these countries, um, the figure is a little bit unrealistic, I think. You know, it's... it's um, you know, I've, I've seen basically videos where some guy says it'll cost you a thousand dollars. You can live comfortably in Southeast Asia on a thousand dollars a month. Um, a thousand dollars a month, okay, okay, okay. It's doable, but you're not really going to have a great deal of fun on a thousand dollars a month. Um, it depends whether you. You know, you know, you drink excessively or you, you, you really want to indulge in the nightlife. There's a lot of factors that go into it. But for the average person who wants to go out to Southeast Asia and have a fun life, a bit of entertainment and live a good lifestyle, I think $1,000 uh, is a bit, you know, mediocre. It, it's not really a substantial fund. So uh, other, others have posted videos saying it's more like $2,000 a month. Now, that's more realistic. On $2,000 a month, you could live a good life in Southeast Asia, a comfortable life uh, on $2,000. I'm pre pretty sure, sure of that. But the difference, difference between $1,000 a month and $2,000 a month, that's a big difference. And a lot of that depends on you as a person. Some people live frugally, it comes natural to them. Some people just want to spend, spend, spend like there's no tomorrow. And uh, if you do that in Southeast Asia, then you're going to run into trouble <laughs> very, very soon. So I'm thinking of doing it a different way. Now, in the last video, I mentioned my plans of, uh, you know, maybe if I drink alcohol, I will be, you know, doing it one month on, one month off. That's not a bad starter. Um, but also, with regards to the budget, I'm thinking of doing something similar with the monthly budget. Uh, you know, one month, you know, you will want nightlife and uh, other things, and that's the expensive bit in your budget, nightlife. That's, you know, that's the bit that's going to cost you. But, you know, you, you don't really need to do that all the time, unless, you know, you're a nightlife addict. I mean, I wouldn't want nightlife and all that kind of stuff all the time. So my idea is basically to live a good entertaining life for one month and then live a very, very frugal one for the following month. Now, um, it's basically, you know, one month living and one month existing. Now, I'm sure some of you will be saying, well, that's a bit bizarre, isn't it? Well, it wouldn't be the first bizarre thing that I've done. No, no, basically what I'm saying is that if you have a monthly budget or a, or a weekly budget or, or a yearly budget or whatever, then there are some places that you will go over your budget. And 
if you do that, you know, you keep doing that, you're going to end up having problems. But there's nothing stopping you from living your life and maybe going over your budget one month and in the following month pulling back on that budget. Now, not everyone would have the discipline to do that. But when it comes to travel, I've always done that. That is exactly what I've always done. When I've been traveling for maybe four, five, six months at a time, there are some places where you will go over your budget. But as long as you know that you're going over your budget, you will then find other places where you can go under your budget in order to, you know, level out over the period of time. I'll give you an example. You know, I once spent six months traveling around South America, starting and finishing in Brazil, and in between there was Argentina, uh, Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, all of those places. I once spent six months doing that. And beforehand, this was, you know, before I was YouTubing uh, some years ago, and beforehand a lot of people said, how much is all that going to cost you? And I said that my budget is £10,000, you know, for six months, OK? Now, some people said, £10,000, you're not going to have much fun on that. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, you sure that's the right budget? I thought, you know, I've travelled enough, I know that that's doable. So what I've done, I budgeted for £10,000 for six months in South America. I had a return ticket to Rio de Janeiro. And uh, basically, in the first couple of weeks in Rio, I went well over budgets. I mean, those of you who've been to Rio, you know, will know you can easily, uh, you easily go over budget. There's a lot of fun to be had in a place like that. Uh, so, yeah, for the first couple of weeks, I went well over my, my designated weekly budget, uh, definitely. And I thought, well, I've got to pull back on it. But then what happens? I travel to other places, yeah, you know, which were, were, where, where there wasn't so, so, so much entertainment, so much stuff to tempt you to spend your money. Um, and I gradually pulled back on my budget. And when it came to places like Bolivia, I, you know, I, I stayed in Bolivia and I went well under budget. So it doesn't take a genius to figure out that, you know, in some places you're going to go over budget. But then you've got to find places where you go under budget in order to level out. It's common sense, really. Now, not everyone would have the discipline to do that. But like I say, I've done that on all my travels. I've always done it. Cities and entertainment uh, zones are always going to cost more money than what you what you uh, plan, plan on spending. But you compensate it by finding other places, like rural places, which are, where you're going to spend a lot less. It's all doable. It takes a bit of discipline, you know, a bit of getting used to it, but it is quite quite doable. I don't see any reason why I can't do that, you know, all the time when I'm travelling. I mean, I, mean I, like, um, I like, you know, bars and I like entertainment places. I'm beginning in Pattaya, as, as I just said. I like all of that, but I don't want that all the time. I mean, if you're living abroad, it's going to be very, very different than if you're on, on, on holiday. On holiday, you're not under a time limit. You want to squeeze in as much as you can. I would imagine that living in these places on a full-time basis, your whole outlook would be very, very different. And the idea that, you know, I can, you know, have a bit of entertainment, I can socialise and live it up and do all that kind of stuff one month, and in the following month, you know, pull back on that budget and just stay in my condo and watch Netflix and that kind of stuff. Um, that's all doable. I don't see a problem with that. Uh, you know, if you see a problem with that, then, you know, you know, let me know. But like I say, I've always done that sort of thing travelling, so I don't really see, you know, any reason why I can't continue doing it when I'm living abroad. Of course, there's some things that you've got to budget for the, for the whole year. Maybe your standard of accommodation, you want to budget that for the whole year. Uh, but then, remember, some places are cheaper than others. And um, also, if you want to do things like own a car, then, you know, you've got to budget that for the whole, whole year. Uh, personally, I've got no, no ambition to have a car. I, I like driving, but uh, I'm not going to be driving at all when I'm abroad. I just don't want a car. I don't want to be driving when I'm abroad. The public transport system is, 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 uh, is really, really good in South or East Asia, so... Cars are off the menu for me, you know. I mean, I like cars, except for uh, when things go wrong with them and then you have to pay an, an absolute fortune in re repair bills. You know, I can, I can certainly do without that. But, yet yeah, there are some things that you will have to uh, budget for the whole year. But some, some there are things, it's mainly nightlife. I mean, you don't need nightlife all the time. Um, you, you, I mean, I would not personally want to be out 
drinking and partying every night of the year or even every month of the year or anything like that. It's something that I, I don't want to do. And besides, it's not good for your health. If you're out drinking and overeating uh, all, all the time, you know, your health is going to deteriorate quite rapidly. I've, I've uh, worked quite hard to get my weight down a little, little bit um, and I, I wanted to stay that way. So let's do a simple calculation on that one. Now, I mentioned that some people quote $1,000 a month to live in Southeast Asia, whereas others quote $2,000 a month to live in Southeast Asia. You know, if you go on that basis, it's, it's a very, very easy calculation. If, if, um, if you live well one month and then live very, very frugally the following month, yeah, you can live on $2,000 a month or $1,000 a month. You, you know, if you do the calculation, um, you, you know, $2,000 a month will be $24,000 a year. That's, that's quite a big expenditure. Whereas if you're living on 1000 that's 12000 a year. And, you, you know, to live like a pauper out there, because I think that's what you would be if you live like that all, all the way. But there's, there's something in between, and it's quite simple, really. You know, if you have all your entertainment one month and then live very frugally the following month, one month, $2,000, the next month, $1,000. doesn't take a genius to work that out at $18,000 a year, which is, you know, that's quite reasonable. $18,000 a year, what's that in pounds? You know, it's, it, we're talking dollars, but you get the, get the gist. By holding back one month at a time, um, you can save yourself a lot of money uh, uh, that way. And, um, and really, the idea of... Um, you know, after a month party, I think all they want to bloody do is stay in, you know, indoors and watch Netflix and, you know, eat, eat fruit and eat, eat healthily or all of that. It's quite doable. So, um, yeah, yeah, one, one month living, one month existing. I kind of like the sound of that. Yes, but, but you may well say, yes, Ed, but what happens if you get yourself a steady girlfriend when you're out there? Or even a wife? What happens if you get married and have a wife? And maybe have children and all that kind of stuff and have a family and, and take on her family and her, her family's expenditure and all that. Well, obviously, that's you can't do one month on, one month off uh, when you... Um, uh, you, you, you know, you as a partner in the equation, uh, because um, that's that is a twelve month thing. You know, you get married and have a steady girlfriend in Southeast Asia. Um, <clears throat> you're going to spend a lot more money. It's going to be a full time thing, and you're going to spend loads of money, and not just on her, but on her family and all that kind of stuff. And um, <laughs> all as I'll say is, uh, good luck. I won't be doing it. So anyway, uh, just, a, just a, th a few thoughts that I'd like to share with you. Uh, you know, one month, uh, you know, living comfortably. The next month, living bargain basement. Or I suppose you could put it another way. Uh, one month, Marks and Spencer. The next month, Asda and the co-op. Okay? So, um, you know, it's just a few thoughts that I'd like to share with you. Any, anyway, it's all doable. And even if you've got plenty of money, I mean, you still need to be disciplined with money. If you're going to make the big move uh, to, to, to live in a place like that, then you've got to be disciplined with money. Because uh, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of guys who've uh, fallen onto severe problems by not having discipline with money. Anyway... I'll say thanks for watching. I've only got another couple of uh, months to go, two and a half months, uh, yeah, you know, to that flight. Very, very reasonable priced flight and very reasonable priced uh, hotel in Pattaya uh, uh, to, to get me uh, on, underway. I can't wait. I just can't wait. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a nice day, a great evening, whatever you're doing, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.